11th Hour Audio Production presents Wolpertingers. step and it could have all been over for me right there i breathed deeply it hurt but i greeted the pain eagerly as air flooded into my lungs like a storm like a gale gale i couldn't give up yet over here i tried to get up tried to answer riley's call but i, I couldn't a jolting pain struck through my right leg and hip. I closed my eyes for what seemed but a moment, hoping the pain would cease, hoping that Riley would find me, hoping that the next time I opened my eyes again, she would be there. I don't know how much time I lost. When I opened my eyes again, it was neither Riley nor Ingrid looking at me, but the wide-eyed gaze of a silver rabbit. No, not a rabbit. It only resembled a rabbit. Its head was crowned with the small golden antlers of a young deer, just like a jackalope until I noticed the pair of brown wings flexing on its back and the proud plumage of a rooster's tail feathers trailing behind it. For a brief moment, the beauty of this fascinating creature made me forget the pain in my leg. <laughs> Riley and I had seen many strange things. We rode Kelpies together in Scotland tracked down a Mananangal in the Philippines and hunted chupacabra in Russia. But the description of these creatures, it sounded like the common crap hunters and taxidermists would tell gullible tourists to sell their stuffed animals that they sewed together out of the different body parts of animals. Riley and I didn't think they were genuine. You know, just another local folktale. And yet here I lay, in the middle of the Bavarian forest, face to face with one of them. Ingrid's HQ told us that there had been sightings all over Bavaria and Austria, some even in Poland and the Czech Republic. In the German-speaking countries, they had many names. Obedrischel, Kreischel, and Eierling Volmilksau are just some of them. But the name they're most famously known as the world over was Wolpertinger. Despite the creature seeming to be composed of parts that did not belong together, it, it radiated a strange beauty. But its most striking feature was not the strange collection of animal parts it seemed to be made of, but rather the large eyes it watched me with. They seemed to be larger than a rabbit's eyes should be. Hearing the voices of Riley and Ingrid, the creature lifted its head and looked at me with its large, olive green eyes. Green, like Gale's eyes. <laughs> what an unusual color. Not a color I have ever seen in an animal. Um, you are hurt. What? He will be all right now. And with that, 
It opened its jaw wide, revealing a pair of yellow fangs the size of my pinky. Just before it lunged at me. Wilda! Wilda! Riley! Wilda! Are you all right? Riley! Oh, good. You're conscious. Are you hurt? Anything mm-hmm. broken? My leg, I think. Let me see. Uh, hey, Wilda, I want you to tell me where you hurt. All uh, right? Everywhere. Shit, this is bad. Well, there's no blood. That's good, right? Not that. You shouldn't have shot that thing. <laughs> if I'd been any closer, I would have kicked it out of the way. Now, can we please uh, focus yes, on... Yes, yes, all right. Wilda. Mm? Can I you handle you... her? What does it look like I'm doing? All right, all right. I'll call HQ. We need a rescue helicopter. Just do it. Uh, yes. Centrala, Wilda, this is Ingrid. Does this hurt? Uh, Barely. Barely. This Shit. is Ingrid. Out with the hunters. Uh, How's the... We oh, had an shit. accident and uh, Looks like this one's broken. You don't say. Please come in. Scheiße! I can't get a signal. Stop cursing and help me. I don't. I think we need to set the leg before we carry her off. Carry her off? No. We can't move her. I can't get hold of HQ. No signal. Shouldn't those radio units be more reliable? Should be, yes. I don't know what's wrong. What's wrong. Our safest bet is to carry her down the and see if we can get the, and get the better Fine. stickers. Do you know how to set her? Two, three. Ah, oh, shit. She's awake. Well, it's set now. Try to get those painkillers into her. How many? Two for now. More later if she needs it. Two. Gotcha. Wilda. Hey, Wilda. What? We set your leg, okay? But you need to take some painkillers anyway. Can you do that? Yep, I can try. Come on. Do it for Gail, okay? G- Gail would spit these right back in your face. <laughs> yup. But you won't. You'll take them, all right? Mm Mm-hmm. Here, I'll pour you some water. Mm. You're doing fine. Mm. What about the hunt? We can hardly hunt in the way you are. We have to get you to the hospital first. Shit. Do you remember how or why you fell? I thought I heard a voice down the slope a ways, and uh, I wanted to take a look. A voice? Uh, I'm not exactly sure it was a voice. Um, a howl, maybe? Are there wolves in this area? No. This is a hiking trail, not a zoo. But you said you had to close it down because of incidents. Yes, caused by those us. The it owl. was hard to stay focused. My focus kept shifting back to the shot Wolpertinger laying just a few paces away. Poor thing. Its limbs lay scattered on the ground beside me. Was a simple handgun supposed to do this? In the damp, moonlit night air, I saw steam rising from them. Um, They were still warm. Still twitching. Um, Riley? Hmm? Um, that rabbit? Shit. What's happening? This is what makes these Wolpetingas so dangerous. The parts that... They're reassembling. Yes, they have a regenerative ability. Where's my gun? Don't waste your bullets. This thing is going to continue doing that no matter how often you shoot it. But how else are we... Is this the reason for the machetes? Exactly. But these small vulpies are harmless. Vulpies? Harmless? That one was lunging for Wilda. If we hadn't arrived in time, it would have... It's on the tip of her nose? Oh, come on, be serious. That's a rabbit. You've never watched the Holy Grail, have you? (laughs) Of course I have. But rabbits can hardly open the jaws wide enough to bite a whole finger off. They can still do a lot of damage with those claws. That aside, a vulpe's diet consists primarily of roots and Prussian soft skulls. As they Prussian argued, what I watched the creature reassemble itself. As far as it could, anyway. It seems that Riley's bullet destroyed half of the creature's skull, and its regeneration wasn't perfect. It sat back on its haunches, peacefully and without malice as if nothing had happened. It turned its half-barren skull toward me and watched me curiously through its one remaining green eye with a hypnotizing stare. You are alright. I am alright. Everything is alright. Wilda? Wilda? 
she's losing consciousness again. Wilda? When I came to again, we were on the move. Mm -hmm. My senses were numbed. Everything around me passed by in a haze. I vaguely perceived Ingrid carrying me. You know this trail much better than me. Why am I the one going on ahead? Because you're better trained with weapons. I'm just a tour guide. The sound around me was muffled. Due to the painkiller or the blanket they had wrapped me in, I don't know. Riley was walking ahead, I think. Though while I tried, I couldn't bring my gaze to lift from the green-eyed Vulpertinger trailing beside us. I closed my eyes again, just for a moment. When I opened them again, more Vulpertingers had joined us, each one a patchwork of different animals. There was a ferret with a fish's tail and a fox with duck's feet. There was a small fawn with the spines of a hedgehog running along its slender neck. Some of them had body parts at various stages of decay. Others only had bones for limbs, overgrown with moss. Riley took no action against them, as they apparently took none against us. I really don't feel safe with all these critters around. As I said, they're harmless. As long as they stay docile anyway. And how do I tell when they're about to turn not docile? There's no telling. Why did we end up here? Out of all people, your HQ should have hired a couple of real hunters for this. According to an old superstition, oh. vulpes can only be found by beautiful young women at a full moon night such as this. <laughs> then you certainly picked the wrong women for the job. <laughs> well, I think Wilda at least fits oh. the criteria. Aren't you supposed to say something nice about me, too? Well, that would be a blatant lie and a waste of both of our times. German efficiency. All right. Well, this is probably why Wilda was the first to be sought out by those things. In all seriousness, though, uh, HQ called you because we heard of your successes at finding and taking care of supernatural beings. But we were called in to take care of their mother, right? Correct. Or at least assess her once we find her. See if you're capable of taking her on. If we come out of it alive. She's become rather slow and sluggish in recent years. Even carrying Wilda, we should be able to outrun her, should we come across her. If she's so slow, then you could have taken care of her yourselves. I think I need to take a break. How much further back to civilization? At this pace? Possibly three hours. Three? We have to get Wilda to a hospital as quickly as possible. I know. But I can't keep this up for three hours. Oh. Okay, fine. But just a short one. Oh. Oh. Thanks. That's that's all I need. Oh. Shit. These things are making me nervous. Just ignore them. They won't harm you. I know. But tell me more about this mother creature. If she's so slow, couldn't you have taken care of her yourselves? We tried, but she seems to avoid us when we go out to look for her specifically. Wilda and I don't usually seek these creatures to uh, to slay them, you know? Unless they're a threat. The mother certainly is. Maybe. But we don't seek out these creatures with the intent to kill them, if we don't have to. That's not who we are. Some of these creatures might very well be the last, or even... The only of their kind. All the more reason not to harm these ones, Uh, don't you think? These are different. These can just reassemble themselves. Can I ask you something? Hmm? Why do you offer this kind of service in the first place? Why offer to seek out creatures of folklore, if not to capture them, or even free those plagued by these beings of them? We just want to find them. See if they exist. If there's anything to their folklore. And you seem to be particularly successful in what you do. Uh, Wilda has this magnetic effect on them. We don't know why, but ever since we were children, they've haunted her. Even as we grew older, 
she never lost the thrall she has on some of them. Most of them were peaceful, some were not. As her friend, it was my duty to keep her safe. And that is how you two started this line of business? Precisely. <laughs> Shit. No, don't. Don't hurt them. You said they're good as long as they stay docile. Does them killing each other seem docile to you? Instincts. The bodies they possess might be dead animals, but they still operate on instincts. Oh, are you sure it's wise to just let them follow us like that? Well, you could waste your energy fighting them and hacking them to pieces, but as long as they don't attack us, there's no reason for us to waste our energies. They won't attack unless provoked. We have to focus on getting Wilder to a hospital. Yeah, fine. We should get moving again. Please, just a moment longer. Carrying a person is not as easy as it seems. We could switch if you want, as long as we can move on faster. Thanks, but I'd rather have the person with the weapons free to react at any given moment. Will these also you know, restore themselves? Possibly, though their bodies might end up in different constellations than they used to be. Do you know anything about how these things come to be? How they put themselves back together? I mean, if you tear one of them apart, which part of them is responsible for... Recreating their bodies. Possibly all of them. All of them? As far as we could tell, anyway. One of my colleagues tried to study them, captured a few to do tests on them. He determined that even if you hack one into small bits, each bit will use material from its surrounding to recreate a body. However, if you hack the newly formed being into pieces, only the original part will form a new body. So this process is limited to those bits that belonged to the original Wolpertinger? Not quite. My colleague let one of the newly formed Volpies free with a chip to track it. Oh. After a few days, he captured it again and hacked it to pieces. And? This time, all of the new body parts reassembled their own bodies. Their circulatory system, maybe? We're not certain. We assume that it could have something to do with milk. Milk? He found that the only substance it had ingested since release was milk. Oh. Cow's milk? Goat? Its chemical components were closer to mother's milk. Hence, we assume that the biggest wolpie that has been sighted in recent years must be their mother. I see. There used to be far fewer of these wolpies around, you see. They were never a threat. Not usually, anyway. Ever since the creature we call their mother was sighted, the number has almost explosively increased. I see. Is their mother also like them? Able to reassemble her body, I mean? We don't know. We've never seen her. And then how do we recognize her? We have some descriptions from tourists that claim to have seen her, but the descriptions vary a lot. Some believe she has the body of a sow that nursed wolfies when she was sighted. Oh. Others claim she has the form of a wolf or bear, though how she came by such a body in this area is beyond me. <laughs> and then there are those that, that claim she has taken part of a human body. Oh, of course. Someone had to say that. If that's not even the best of it. Whoopee! Some say that unlike regular Wolpies, she also has multiple heads. Oh, of course. In addition to whatever head she has, there are frequent mentions of a goat's head on her back. This is why we have dubbed her Chimera. Chimera. W Wilda, you're awake. You have heard of the Chimera? Um, not this one, but I, I know mythology. But we don't have time for that. We have to hurry. Agreed. Shit. Let's get moving again. Something's agitating these things. Mm. She's near. I can sense her. Sense who? <sighs> Shit. Was that her? That was the howl I heard earlier. She's coming our way. How do you... Uh... <sighs> Shit. What are they doing? They're fleeing. That's it. We should, too. No. What do you mean, no? They're not fleeing. Walking They're walking toward their mother. Shit. The chimera came crashing through the underbrush on two muscular legs. Wolf legs? Goat? I couldn't tell. After hearing Ingrid's descriptions, I, I didn't know what to expect her to look like, but this certainly was not it. The best I could describe her as was a mixture of uh, a minotaur, werewolf, and baphomet. Bipedal, feral tall, unnaturally tall for the animal parts she seemed to be made of, and immensely strong. 
One sweep of her large paw-like hand was enough to break the underbrush that stood in her path. Oh, God! Ingrid, get up! I didn't think she... We have to run! Ingrid! She's huge! Pull yourself together! Oh, God! You said she isn't very fast. I need you to take Wilda and get out of here. No, I, I won't leave you behind. Shut up, Wilda. You don't get a say in any of this. Oh, God! Ingrid! Oh, God! Ingrid! <laughs> Shit! Ingrid! Riley, give me the gun and go with her. Shut up! We're in this together! <laughs> Riley, that doesn't do anything. I see that. Shit! On second thought, you take this. What about... Still got a machete. Try to drag yourself as far as you can. Only use the gun when you need to. I'll keep it distracted. You know how useless that is. She'll just come after me like all of the other creatures. What else am I supposed to do with you in this situation, Wilda? If you could still walk, maybe... The... Shit! It speaks. No. Riley! 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 No. 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 Stay away. What? You are safe with me. Save? You just knocked Riley out. You are safe with me. You will be well. You are not. You are hurt. I will help you. No, don't come closer. I will help you. As my bullets went through her large, almost human-like paw without any effect, I decided to resort to cowardice. I tossed the gun aside and scrambled out of her reach, as best as I could in my state anyway. No. No. It will all be over quickly. Hold it still. No. Needless to say, that was a plan doomed to fail from its outset, no. born of pure desperation. No. Scurrying, I looked over my shoulder. I saw her paw inching closer as time seemed to slow down. In the spaces between her outstretched fingers, I I saw something lay in front of the chimera's feet, milk from her lactating teeth spilling over it. Was it Riley? Riley! Riley! Oh, gods, was she going to turn Riley into one of them? I, I couldn't tell, couldn't see clearly. Then her entire paw filled my vision as she reached for me, for my splintered leg. I felt her furry hands wrap around my thigh, firm, yet almost gently, while her other wrapped around my waist. I braced myself for what she was about to do next. A jolt of pain pierced through my body as I felt her jerk my leg from its socket. Before the full force of the pain could reach my nervous system, I gave in to the benevolent embrace of unconsciousness. Sunlight washed over me as I regained consciousness. I opened my eyes. It was early morning. Birds were chirping, crickets were singing. How was I still alive? My limbs, stiff from exhaustion and a night spent motionless on hard soil, I I noticed that the pain in my leg was gone. Had I just dreamt all that? I looked around, trying to get a sense of where I was. I lay in a clearing, spread across a patch of dew-wet moss covering the roots of an old and gnarly walnut tree. Looking up its trunk, I saw a squirrel. It watched me with curious eyes. Normal, black squirrel eyes. I sighed in relief. The squirrel flicked its tail at me and then spread its jaybird's wings and glided across the clearing to the next tree. Oh, no. A wolpertinger. No. I watched its flight before my eyes were drawn to a dark silhouette in the grass, laying just a few paces beside me. Riley. It was Riley. Oh, Riley. Riley, wake up. She was unconscious, but breathing. Riley. At least we were both alive. 
I couldn't imagine what would have become of Gale if something had happened to either of us. But then, if this wasn't just a dream... I sat up in terror, frightened of what I would find instead of my leg. But before I had a chance to examine what had become of my body, I saw another dark figure lay at the end of my feet. Crumbled up in a heap of dark gray fur, wet with dew drops and congealed blood was the figure of the chimera. Is she... Is she dead? One of her legs was gone. Her right leg. I swallowed hard and looked down on myself. No. The chimera's leg was conjoined to my hip, milk still oozing out from the wound. I scrambled backwards, trying to get away from my own leg. So futile. Then, I noticed the squealing protest of two Wolpertingers clinging to me, sucking milk from my six teeth. You have been listening to Wolpertingers featuring Sarah Ray Werner as well. Heather Spiegel Auden as Riley. <laughs> Erica Sanderson as Ingrid. <laughs> Beth Gray. With additional animal noises provided by the cast and crew. Special dialogue editing by Tanya Milojevic. Sound design and mix by Sarah Bachinski. Music by Catherine Seaton. Directed by Sarah Golden. Squirrel Fop. Written by Cassie Velinicki. Special thanks go to Sarah Golding for bringing this wonderful group of hangry bitches together. <laughs> He'll be a